Don't hold back with your stroke. If I put a lot of draw on the ball, I can kind of come around the 10 into the rail and disturb those two balls. Hey, I'm Raleigh Williams, and I'm here with world champion player Torsten Homan. Torsten, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, today. Raleigh. Of course. Now, um, Torsten, uh, amongst other world championships that he has and is too humble to tell you about, uh, Torsten is a multiple time straight pool world champion. Is this correct? Uh, let's okay. say I'm, right. a, I'm a decent straight pool player. So Torsten knows how to play some freaking straight pool. So in order to really even the playing field, Torsten and I are gonna play every other shot. We're gonna try as a team to get as high of a break as we can, but remember, every other shot is being played by me. So, you know, manage your expectations. Um, so what are we gonna do? How do we start this thing up? Okay, Rolly, uh, break shot is on you. Okay. Uh, my first piece of advice here is don't hold back with your stroke. Okay. okay? Um, of course, nothing replaces training and practice. The more straight pool you play, the more break shots you hit, the better you'll get at them. But one thing that I noticed with uh, maybe beginners or not so experienced straight pool players, when they come to a break shot, they hold back. They get intimidated. You know, this is the one that makes or breaks your high run. Yeah. Um, this one is pretty much automatic. All you have to do is shoot the one in and it will blast the rack wide open. Okay. In general, break shots get um, under hit a lot. So in this case, many beginners will miss the break shot on this side. Okay. okay. Just clear your mind and blast it. All right. Okay, I cleared my mind and I blasted it and I left you in. Not a great spot. You know, that happens. Um, at least we didn't get stuck somewhere in the rack. Mm. Um, I still have opportunities. Okay. Um, I see a bunch of problems, you know, here, there. Um, it's not the easiest track, uh, but the first challenge is for me to make a ball and leave you a shot. I can cut the seven on the side, which will turn the cue ball loose. Mm. But sometimes you just have to Take a chance. Oh yeah. Okay, so should I take a chance? Take a chance, take a baby chance. boy. All right, looks good. And that's the thing. Um, you think we professional players, we're always in control, and that's true to a certain extent, but sometimes you just try to make the shot uh, with a comfortable speed and then accept the outcome. The priority is to make the ball. In this case, we have what I call a dead zone, okay? If we have the cue ball anywhere near that short rail, it will put us in trouble. Okay. So we need to keep that cue ball away from that rail. There's something to keep in mind always, you know, okay. in this case. Um, instead of just shooting in the six ball, we really have to make sure to get it out of danger. Okay. Um, the second thing we have to consider is a little cluster over here. You know, how do we manage? Uh, we have the two ball, the three ball, and 15 ball as a poten potential break shot. So we have options. So we need to figure out how to get the cue ball out of that corner and then address this problem here. Okay. One thing that I see immediately is the 12 ball is a nice insurance for when we try to break up that cluster here. Okay. I have an angle on the 13. If I put a lot of draw on the ball, I can kind of come around the 10 into the rail and disturb those two balls. Hell yeah. And it's, it looks like a wild shot, but I have so many balls that act as an insurance. I have the 10, I have the six, I have the 12, the two, the five. So there's really nothing that can go wrong. Let's do it, let's do it. I did leave you with a bit of a technical shot. Okay. You know, making the 10 and you have the bridge over the two. Yeah. Um, but now we have a good chance to take care of this. Yeah, all those go. If you can hit this with a, a touch of inside. Inside. Which is actually easier because yeah. you have more room for the cue. Mm -hmm. And then just don't try to do too much with the cue ball. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. The priority is really making the 10. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. 
But if you come back out here, that'd be perfect. Uh, out to there. Oh. <laughs> Just hit it a bit more, a little bit more pace. Oh, cool. <laughs> that was just a bit too much spin. Too you much spin. Which made the shove even tougher than it needed to be. All you needed was like half a tip. Nice. Um, now it's already time to maybe commit to a break shot. The two ball is good. The three ball is maybe even better. Okay. Uh, especially since we have the four and the 12 as good key balls. Okay. Okay. And those are the balls right before the, the break shot. Exactly. Okay. If you can either get on the four. Okay. So we could do four, two, then come here, come over there, and then just a stop shot on the 12 for the three. Okay. Was that too much? It's okay. It's a beauty. Uh, the way we play that there's, there's always options. Mm. And there's... Uh, I don't always play perfect position. I run out, out of position so many times and you might not even notice when you watch me. Yeah. I just keep it going. You know, I'm not worried. You see a lot of players, um, when they're not perfect on the shot they intended to play position on, all of a sudden they're like, oh, they have to, they have to show the world that they're out of line. Where you won't see that from me. I just keep going. Uh, I'm not worried. As long as I end up with a good break shot, I'm happy. Okay. So I don't waste any uh, grief that could, you know, cost me to miss my next shot. I just go to the next one. Okay. And now, were you trying to get back onto the four? I'm trying to get as straight as possible on the four. Um, maybe if I hit the. So I, I, I see two potentials: the four or the fourteen. Could even shoot the 12. That was our key ball. Yes, but okay. I'm gonna lose our key ball. Here's my advice. It is good to have a plan. Okay. But don't be 100% set on it. Wow, Always, that's, I feel like that needs to be. It is good to have a plan, but don't be 100% set on it. I fall victim to that all the time, where I try to like, this is what I wanna do, this is what I wanna do, and I get out of line, and but I try to stick to that and I blow it. Exactly, Raleigh. There's some players, they don't have a plan. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to pick one ball that you want as a key ball, and it's good to work towards that, but at any time, don't be afraid if you see a better pattern or you get out of line, uh, don't be too focused on that one way because you know that might be an easier solution and you just pick it up while you walk around the table. Yeah. So in this case, um, if you are really focused on leaving the 12, then you might miss the next shot. Yeah. Because the 12 now is the easiest ball to make. Yeah. And we still have so many options. So uh, we can also leave the uh, four, two as our key balls. Yeah, because um, we're just trying to get onto the three, right? So if you are more comfortable, shoot the 12. Just bring the cue ball to the rail here. Okay. And then come back up for any of those three balls. Okay. Oh, that's clean. And so, oh, what a beaut. Stop shot. Just a stop shot on the four and then you stop shot on the two. Blast it again, okay? All right. Don't worry about the cue ball. I would hit it low right, like you're drawing the ball. This is some work. You know, I can draw the cue ball into the 15, but all I would do is move the 11 out and the cue ball could be stuck here, so it's too risky. Okay. You know, I have not enough. If I draw it into here, then, uh, no, I, we have to use it. one of the other balls. Maybe the combination. The combination could be a, a shot from here. 
You want to shoot it? It'd be quite entertaining. Sure. You have to cut it a bit into the seven, into the left side of the seven. But it'd be quite uh, exciting if you make it. Wow, I'm already excited just thinking about it. Just, uh, I would line up as if you were shooting the 15 straight into the seven. And then from there, you make the adjustment. Kind of take this as a reference. Okay. And then you make the adjustment over a little bit. That's what I do. Hard stroke, not low because the cue is going into the 11 and then open the rack even more and then the cue will go like towards the center of the table. You can always, you can always miss, it's okay. If you can draw it back a hair, just a hair would be ideal because that creates a little angle on the six. I can bump the 11 out, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of draw. That's perfect. Develop the 11. That looks good. Okay, Torsten, this has been a really good experience for me because it's, you know, I, every other shot is the perfect shot, which is really a, a, a change of pace for me. Thank you so much for good job, teaching Rolly. me this Thank thing. you. Of course. Um, and don't forget to follow Torsten on Instagram and also QLab, new app. Yes, check it out. Check it out. It's the app store. What is it? What, what's the nature of QLab? How does it work? It's a uh, diagramming application. You know, you can chart out. Uh, shots, trick shots, drills, exercises, layouts, whatever, and share it with your friends or send it to me. Ask me if you have any questions and I'll uh, respond to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, see you guys next time. Dude, perfect. <laughs>